Okay, the power singing mistake. This is part two. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see the rest of this series as well. Okay, the second mistake that I see people making is only using chest voice and head voice. Maybe you're more comfortable with chest voice or more comfortable with head, or maybe you've heard about this mixed voice thing and you're like, yes, I need to try to blend chest voice and head voice together because you've been told that that's how mixed voice is created. And listen, I know that you have this goal of being able to just be completely secure in your voice and open up your mouth and have the easiest, powerful notes come out on autopilot. And because you have this goal, you listen when a lot of amazing vocal coaches and you know people on YouTube say that they'll show you how to do it and they'll sell you on the idea that blending chest voice and head voice combined with just keep practicing is the magic pill for creating your mixed voice. But it's just not how God designed your voice. Let me show you how this works. Okay, let's say, let's say my friend Josie is working on these singing strategies right now because she's told that that's how you develop your mixed voice and sing with more power. But she's not seeing any result and she's actually kind of at the end of her rope. <laughs> um, she's at wit's end and wondering why her notes still are not powerful and reliable. So she's singing a song in chest voice, right? Chest voice resonates, um, you know, we feel it in the chest, but it resonates here in the actual mouth. So put your hand on your chest and do this with me. Just um, just like a low note. Uh, that's chest voice. And this register is only designed to cover the bottom third of your range. So Josie is singing in chest voice, right? She's like, peace, bring it all to peace. A storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. It's very conversational because that's where she speaks from. And everything's going okay, but then it starts to get a little bit high. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. And there's this moment eventually where a decision has to be made. She could just push more chest voice. Your name is a lie that the shadows can deny. Your name. But let's say that Josie instinctively knows that pushing that hard is dangerous. She's smart enough to know that it doesn't feel good and so it probably doesn't sound good either. So she doesn't push. Let's say she switches to head voice instead. And this is where head voice resonates, kind of right in the bridge of the nose, but we feel it coming out of the forehead. So put the heel of your hand right in her eyebrows and say, this register is only designed to cover the top third of your range. Okay, so Josie is singing along and um, and then she ends up switching into head voice, which doesn't really have the power that she's looking for. Your name cannot be overcome. <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's just not powerful. It doesn't have the impact that she's looking for. Okay, so then she thinks, I need to blend chest voice and head voice together. <laughs> your name cannot be overcome. She tries to use both, but the problem is the transition isn't smooth and you can totally tell the exact second that she goes from one to the other. Because here's the truth, chest voice and head voice are literally worlds away from each other. They are like the upstairs and the downstairs of your house, <laughs> separated by a floor or a ceiling. And we're spending all of this time and energy trying to get these high notes with the right amount of power and still not able to sing the songs that we really want to just at the drop of a hat. And it's so stressful. It makes everything so stressful. So instead, you have to find what I call the staircase that takes you from the downstairs to the upstairs. And this is a completely different cavity in the head. It's not chest voice and it's not head voice. This register called the pharyngeal voice is responsible for that one third of your voice right in the middle of chest and head. And yet no one talks about it. It's so frustrating. I don't understand it. <laughs> it kills me. But um, this is literally the, the, the bridge between these two sides and what makes that transition possible and what makes powerful notes possible. Try it. Take your finger, put it underneath your nose and say, ha. This register is annoying on its own, but you're mainly going to use it to blend with one or both of the other two. And that is the true mixed voice. It's It sounds totally different than yelling in chest voice or kind of flipping over into head voice. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a lie forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. And that 
feels so much more comfortable and free, which I'm sure that you can tell. So this is the true definition of mixed voice. It's actually three registers, not two. And if you're only using two, you're going against, you're working against how God designed your body. And you're always going to be frustrated because God didn't design chest voice and head voice to meet in the middle. He created something totally new that acts as that bridging point between those two registers. And once you find that, all you have to do is turn it into muscle memory so it's available every single time. And next time you try to sing a powerful song, try to make it just a little whinier than you think you need to. Um, that'll really help you find extra power up in that kind of middle register. You've probably been thinking that it's your highest register, but it's actually your middle register. And if you want to hear more about how to sing with power that doesn't hurt your voice, you should watch my free masterclass for worship leaders. Click the link in the description below or in my bio and I'll see you at the class. You can also find the links for part one on range and part three on confidence in the description box below.